Hello and welcome to round 31 of the TPO Rankings Show, a show all about Australian football through the lens of the TPO Rankings. It's like the FIFA World Rankings, but for 362 Australian football clubs. I'm joined by a man who has never been sent off in his career and a man who loves 7-Eleven coffee all the way from Brisbane this evening. Jake, how are you going? Cody, I'm good, thank you. And uh, just to add to that, I think I only ever got maybe two yellow cards in my entire Career, if you want to call it that. That's pretty defender. impressive. We're, yeah. we're a clean family, Jake. I think I'm about <laughs> five or six yellows and zero reds as well. So maybe that's yeah. saying something, I don't know, positive. Or we, we don't go into the challenges hard enough, maybe. Maybe. Mm. Could be taken both ways, I think. Yep. All right. Well, uh, Jake, tonight we're talking. We've got, a fair, we've got like seven games from last week to quickly recap the results and the movements in the rankings. We've actually, this evening's Q&A, we, um, I put the word out on, on Instagram stories and had about uh, seven questions we're going to answer, just about Australian football, really. So just a bit of uh, casual Q&A, should be a bit of fun. And then, as always, we've got a few games to look forward to this weekend. I think we've got about five games. Uh, MPL Finals Series, FFA Cup, uh, Finals in Victorian, uh, MPL. So I reckon we get straight on in, Jake. What are you, what are you thinking? I think that's probably a decent plan. Let's do it. Jake, can you do the first two games just because I know you were at one, the, the top one. So you just jump on in and um, I'll take over on the third game. Sounds good. So the first one is an MPL, was an MPL championship game. It was Lions FC from uh, Queensland playing Edgeworth Eagles from Northern New South Wales uh, up here in uh, at Richlands at, at Lions home. So I went along to that one. Lions ended up getting a 1-0 win. So, uh, and that was expected as far as the TPO rankings was concerned and also 86% of the TPO supporters voting on Instagram thought Lions would get up as well. Um, probably It was a good game. I thought it was pretty competitive. At the same time, I mean, it's end of the season. It's hard to know what to expect from these games, Cody, because some of these mm. clubs, although they're you know, going to be taking it seriously enough, it's kind of after their grand finals and everything. So it's a, it's a tough one. They're ready for off-season, I'm sure. Um, but I thought Lions were, were good for their win. Uh, in terms of in terms of the TPO rankings, Lions move up one more spot, uh, up to 16th, and Edgeworth fell three places. They're down in 33rd. And Jake, just um, um, what, we may as well touch on that too. I mean, by the time this this comes out, Lions will have played Heidelberg again at Richland. Yep. So they've played that um, the, the MPL Grand Final against Olympic at Richlands, which we both went to. They had this game, which you went to, and then uh, yeah, tomorrow night. So they're, they're getting a lot of important games at Richlands, and they've won two out of three. So we'll see how they go uh, tomorrow night. And by, yeah, yeah. like I said, by the time this comes out, it'll be done. But, um, yeah. And that'll be a, probably another step up in terms of quality playing Heidelberg. Absolutely. So good luck to them. I'm going to hopefully get out there. Midweek's a little tougher, but we'll see how we go. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next one, and again, the MPL Championship, Sydney Olympic versus Perth Soccer Club. Um we had Olympic as the favourites. Eighty-six percent of the supporters went for Olympic, uh, which coincidentally was the same number, same percentage that voted for Lions in the last one. So people are voting obviously the same, and the result ended up with Sydney Olympic winning one nil there as well. So in terms of the rankings, Sydney Olympic actually fell one place this week to fourteenth, and that's because of a game that we're going to touch on in a minute. Avondale actually jumped ahead of them, um, and then Perth remained where they were there. Currently ranked 31st and the highest ranked WA side. Okay, cool. And I'll jump over on the other MPL final series or championship game. That was Canberra versus Canberra FC versus Campbelltown City. It was held down in Canberra. Campbelltown got up 3-0. Now, we did predict that. The system, 66% of the supporters uh, also went for Campbelltown as a result of that one. Cam- uh, Canberra, sorry, fell nine places to 74th. Campbelltown moved up one one spot to 17th to be the highest ranked South Australian team for the first time this year. So they've taken over Adelaide City. So congratulations, Campbelltown, well deserved. Uh, the next game we have here was St George FC versus Mountie Wanderers in the New South Wales MPL two grand final. Uh, the result was three all, uh, and then St George went on to win seven six on penalties. Now we so we scrapped that in terms of the the voting because Instagram Stories doesn't allow more than two uh, options. So we just had to win in in the loss. Uh, we went for St George. The supporters also went for St George, 68%. So as a result of that one, St George stay in 82nd on the rankings. Mounties Wanderers move up one place to 80th. Uh, the next game here was, uh, what would you call this one, Jake? Sort of a, some sort of elimination, qualification, whatever, final? Kind of a promotion playoff, I guess. Yeah. The, the, 
Um, yeah, anyway, we'll leave it at that. Morlan City versus St. Albans Saints. Uh, Morlan City got up 4-1 on this one. We predicted a Morlan City win. 62% of the uh, Instagram supporters also went for Morlan City. They're up three spots on the rankings to 71st. St. Albans Saints fall eight spots to 95th. In, uh, at risk of falling outside the, the 100, I suppose. Uh, they'll have to recruit well in the off-season. But Moreland City, they, they progress, and we I think this is one of our games of the round. So I won't touch on too much, but they'll play Green Gully for a spot in the NPL um, this weekend, I believe. Uh, two more games, Hodderberg United and Oakley Cannons. The result was one all at full-time or after extra time, and Hodderberg went through 5-3 on pens. Uh, we obviously went for Heidelberg and uh, the supporters, 89% of you guys, that's crazy, also went for Heidelberg. Um, Heidelberg actually lose some TPO points because it was recorded a draw. We don't, we don't go off penalties, but they stay in at 11th. Oakley Cannons stay in at 22nd. And the last game here uh, in the Q&A, we got asked something here, so we'll touch on this further. But geez, if, I'm sure everyone knows this, but Bentley Green's Avondale. Uh, Bentley Green's up 3-1. <laughs> With what was it, Jake? Five minutes to five, go. Five, five to go, I think. Yeah, yeah. and and I, I got it on Instagram stories of people saying they're into the final. <laughs> <laughs> Avondale come back four three. We will touch on this soon. Uh, we we predicted a Bentley Greens win fifty five percent was close, but uh, also went for Bentley. Uh, because of that loss, they fall one spot to tenth, and Avondale move up. So Apia take the reins as the top um, non ranked A League side in the country. Avondale move up two spots to twelfth overtaking Wellington Phoenix and I think Sydney Olympic, as you mentioned. So out of those seven games, we scrapped two for draws, so that's five games. And we both went the same way in all those other games, so four out of five. In terms of the running leaderboard, uh, we're on 67, you guys are on 62, five spots behind. I think we've won it. There's probably only one or two more weeks to go, so I'll call it early, just like the commentator did. Again, uh, yeah. <laughs> in uh, the Bentley game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Jake, any other uh, rank or movements in the rankings? I, I usually hand it over to you at the moment, so yeah, anything to mention? Uh, probably we've touched on most of these, but I thought they're worth uh, mentioning yep. again uh, towards the top of the rankings. Up your Leichhardt are the highest ranked non-A-League club again, so they were for a long time. Uh, Bentley Greens took that uh, mantle over briefly, but losing to Avondale has seen them fall back down, so up your back in front for the week. Um, Avondale, with their with that win over Bentley Greens, as you mentioned, move up two places. One of the clubs that they jumped in front of was Wellington Phoenix, mm -hmm. Um, so there are now four MPL clubs ranked higher than Wellington Phoenix and probably another one or two are ranked higher than Central Coast Mariners. Uh, and Campbelltown City, as we also mentioned, just worthy of mention again, they, they've they moved up to be the highest ranked South Australian club in the rankings over yep. Adelaide City. And Adelaide City have been there, uh, I think, the whole year, probably going back into 2017. So that's a, a big move on Campbelltown City's part. And obviously they've still got that next game, so anything could happen Um mm against Sydney Olympic. No, uh, they're the big they're, Yeah, yeah, they're the big ones. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, and Adelaide City, I, I, this would have been a couple of weeks ago, I think, but um, their coach, Damien Mori, I believe, has stepped down. So uh, interesting times yep. for them. Part two of the show, Jay, Q&A. We, we haven't done this. I can't believe it's taken us this we long to even think <laughs> of this concept. Every other bloody good podcast and video show does a Q&A. And uh, I was like, well, why, why the hell not? We'll put it up on Instagram, see what we, we get back. We've got a few, so... We'll try, even though this is probably our maybe second last, third last show of yep. the uh, as a, of the season. Jake, as I mentioned to you before we hit record, we've done more more rounds in the A League, so we're doing pretty well here. Um, I'm just going to jump on in, and we'll just it's it's casual casual, Jake. We we certainly don't need to um, analyse and, and back up everything um, <laughs> as I know you like to do. But which, which is code it, for Jake? Keep it short. Keep it short. We've got seven questions, so we don't want to spend all day. But all right, this is for two questions from the. These are the handles, so I don't know their names. But Jay Often, uh, do you think it's a concern seeing how close in quality the MPL L is in comparison to the A League? Jake, you you first. Uh, no, I don't think that's a problem. I think it's a it's a good sign. I think. It, we've actually done a show showing kind of the comparison of leagues over um, time in Australia, the MPL to the A-League to the ones below it and all of that, and it, it chops and changes. We probably all think that it's closer this year because there's been more FFA Cup upsets, yeah. and maybe they, there is, but I don't know. To me, that's a good thing. I think it shows that the MPLs are progressing. Some of the clubs are being more professional, uh, and I mean, I'm, we're going to get to a question in a minute where we'll touch on this more, but I'm big advocate for a second division mm -hmm. um, and I think that 
the gap between the NPL and A-League closing is just even more reason to, to go and put in that second division. So I think it's a good thing. Jake, I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's move on to the second one. Uh, again, by Jay Offen and Jay, or Jay, as in the, the letter J. Thank you for the questions. Um, where do you see Australian football in the next 10 years in a better or worse state? I'll take this one initially. Just to say I have no idea because uh, we, it's so up in the air right now in terms of the FFA and all that sort of stuff. Uh, even this week, we got news about the music at, at goal kicks and corners and, and safe flair. There's a lot up in the air. You just never know who's going to take the reins, who's going to come up with decisions. So... Um, I'd like to be positive and say it'll be in a better state, and I do believe it, it will be just because of the progress we've made. Uh, obviously, the A-League uh, is now, what, 14, 13, 14 years in. We've got the FFA Cup coming in, and we are seeing these clubs, NPL clubs, really push, and, and the, um, is it the PFA, Jake, or the, the association that's sort of looking to, mm-hmm. not the players, football, the other one, the one that's... AAFC? Played, yeah. yeah, looking to create sort of a second division. I think there's a push for it. Um, people want it. And people can see that um, there is that the quality gap, as in question one you just stated, isn't really there anymore. So I think people, the, the positive things are pushing forward, and I think it will be in a better state. But of course, um, there's some idiots who could certainly stuff that up. Jake, your <laughs> opinion? I like to be optimistic and think that there's, I mean, there's so much upside. There really is. Um, and I think with the right people in charge, which is going to be the asterisk to this, uh, you know, we can be in a much better state. It's The thing is, 10 years go so quickly, but when you sit here planning it, there's a lot that can happen. Like, you look back 10 years and, you know, maybe maybe not a great example because right now we probably, A-League was looking really good and it's probably gone <laughs> backwards since this time 10 years ago. But, I don't know, there's a lot that could happen um, very positive for the game. Uh, but, like I said, that caveat is it depends on who's in charge making decisions. I I fall in the camp that says the FFA, as it currently stands, and the leadership is probably not the um, you know the optimistic, you know, exciting sort of, or the people that are going to be excited to try and push the game forward. They, they seem to be a bit conservative, and obviously all this Congress stuff that's yeah. going on is, is kind of showing that they've lost a bit of support. So... Yeah, the short answer is I think it, it will be better and I think it can be a lot better, but it, it definitely will depend on, on those running the show. Yeah, absolutely. I, I tend to agree, Jake. Thank you for that. And maybe if we have anything to do with it, it will be in a better shape. And uh-huh. um, We'll actually, do what we can. Yeah, maybe next week. Jake has written, uh, pre- previous to this season, a big document on the vision of Australian football, his vision. And uh, we might actually do a standalone uh, show or podcast or maybe mix it into next week and it touches on exactly what Jake thinks. Um, and I'll attach me in there too because Jake, Jake's much more articulate. <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get the criticism, stuff. yeah. Oh, I, no, Jake, you got a lot of praise when it first came out too. Criticism and applause. So I think you did a good job. And um, Anyway, this is from our friends from On The Bench. Thanks for the question, yep. guys. Personally, across all the MPL leagues... Who do you feel didn't live up to the billing this season? So he said personally, so it's not really to do with TPO rankings as as such, but I'll touch on a few clubs, Jake, and I yep. think you touch on some too. So yep. personally, um, Blacktown City, I, I, you know, they, they went in, I don't know exactly, I don't have the rankings in front of me where they were at the start of the season, but they were, um, you know, in the top two or three, I think, clubs. They've dropped down quite a bit this year um, and they finished fourth in the New South Wales NPL. So I'd say Blacktown City. I'd also say Belconnen United from the ACT. They, they won the grand final last year and they didn't even make finals this year. Green Gully, obviously fighting for their survival. They um, were a decent club last year and now they could be in the NPL too. And Sorrento, I don't know. So they started at such a decent ranking. I can't even remember where they finished last year. They finished eighth this season with um, a couple of good results at the end of the year, but for for a moment they were almost looking at relegation, and they're a big um, club in WA. So, they're four clubs just off the top of my head. Jake, um, what about you? Yeah, I had a few as well. So Manly, United, in New South Wales won the the grand yeah, they're final the obvious last ones, year. Aren't they? Yeah. Yep, um, and finished seventh this year outside the finals place. Um, Brisbane Strikers in in Queensland didn't make the finals, finished fifth, and. Uh, probably less from a TPA rankings point of view. This is just more. They're uh, obviously one of the best clubs in Queensland, and and you'd expect them to be making the finals, so they'll be, they'll be disappointed. South Melbourne, um, yeah, they they haven't done too much. Well, they, you know, they they had a decent season last year, but probably more from a TPA rankings point of view, they were one of the highest ranked clubs in the country outside the A League, and and obviously didn't have a very good year. They finished tenth, and for a while there were uh, looking like they might be in that relegation battle. 
Uh, and then the big one here for me as well is Croydon Kings in South Australia, mm. who won the grand final last year and have finished just one place outside the relegation in the um, yeah, the South Australian NPL. So those are probably the picks for me, Cody, that I was... I don't know, it's, a, it's an interesting one. Maybe we can preempt this question um, next year for 2019. Maybe mm. we'll start off um, with one of the early shows next year by you know, highlighting a few of those clubs that we're expecting big things of. Yeah, I like that one. And thanks again for the question on the bench. Uh, this is from N. Zach. Uh, was Avondale's comeback the best in Australian football history? N. Zach, I don't know. We, we, we can't touch on this in terms of TPO rankings, um, the algorithm and the stats, but um, geez, it's got to be one of the best um, in terms of just pure, you know, like we mentioned before, 3 1 down. They finish up, not even, they didn't even make it to extra time. I mean, sorry, penalties. They just, they finished it um, in, in extra time, which is, is crazy. And yeah. just to go back and watch that, the live, it was pretty exciting. And yeah, in terms of the best, Jake, what do you reckon? It's a hard one. And I'd actually say maybe this is a question back to those um, watching or listening at home. Uh, if there's any that you can think of that come close, because there's so much, obviously, in terms of football and you know, what's more important? Is it finals games? Is yeah. it, uh, you know, is the national level more important than the tier two? All that sort of stuff, you know. Obviously, there's a couple of NSL games that um, that those were watching at the time will we'll say are up there. Yeah, um, true. The first one that comes to mind for me would be the Brisbane Raw Central Coast Mariners grand final. But as you say, you know, they were two goals down as well and, and pulled it back to penalties to win and yeah. with four minutes to go. And that was a big deal. But this is going one extra step and saying they've, they've not only brought it back two goals in the last five minutes. They've actually scored a, a third as well, so it probably notches above that one as well. Um, Jake, what was that game, the NSL grid? Was it Wollongong and... Um, oh, and Perth. Perth, Perth yeah. Warrior, yeah. Weren't they up 3-0 at half-time or something? Was that yeah, one? exactly, and that's the one that always gets raised, and yeah. that probably that one will make the list purely because of how important it was, a grand final, and it was NSL and all that. But then, even then, you've got to think, they had an entire half of football to score the three goals, didn't they? Like, <laughs> this is... Uh, Avondale scored all three in five minutes in extra time. Impressive. Yeah, regardless, yeah, it was pretty so, bloody impressive. I don't know, but yeah, let's maybe let Cody. Let's turn that into a question for anybody at home. Yep. Send us a comment with uh, any games that you think should make the list of, uh, or at least being part of that conversation. Yep. Cool. All right. Uh, two to go. So we've got Thomas Birch Smith. Thomas, thanks for the question. How do you think the two new A League clubs will go in terms of members and attendance? Well, Thomas, obviously, it, it comes down to who those clubs are. Uh, that's sort of the obvious one for me. But, Jake, what do you reckon? You tackle this one first. Uh, what Cody said. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit hard to yeah. say, isn't it? It's, it is hard. I mean, obviously a team in Tasmania might uh, it will, will probably struggle a little bit more for, not that Tasmania's in the running, obviously, but um, just as the example, you know, the, the crowds um, might be a lot different than, a, you know, another team in Sydney or in Melbourne or, or even a Brisbane. So, obviously, it's entirely dependent on where the club is and how they engage with the people um, from their communities and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, probably not yeah. much more we can say, to be true. Until, until we know the clubs, yeah, and obviously they've got a... a um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Anyway, all right, let's move on then. Corey Ando 24 Corey underscore Ando 24 thank you for your question. If you could change one thing about Australian football, what would it be, Corey? For me, I think, um, and this is honestly just, just the yeah, top of my head, um, if you look at all the issues, I would just say if we could have a functional... Uh, viable promotion and relegation tiered football uh, right up to the top and, and even like the English system, I suppose, right down to divisions, maybe even third, fourth division. Uh, I think that would solve a lot of problems. Uh, it would give pl- everyone opportunity, clubs, players, referees, coaches, supporters. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Jake, what about you? Uh, I think I'll agree with you and I'll, I'll say the reason that I think that's probably the, the big one is to me, if you say, what's the one thing um, that we need to change? It's to be inclusive. It's to to open up for any club to be at any kind of position within the pyramid that they are they want to be. So, if clubs that want to be ambitious and, and reach the top tier, uh, they should be allowed to by proving it on the field and and off the field in terms of facilities and you mm-hmm. know coaching and all, and all the rest of it. Um, and the clubs that are happy being a you know an MPL or a a fifth tier social club, then that's fine too. I think it should be, you know, it should be opened up because to me that kind of incentivizes, or at least it, it says to those clubs that have the ambition to be at the top, mm-hmm. here you go, here's an avenue for you, but you've got to prove it. It doesn't just happen or, or get handed to you. So 
um, promotion relegation is kind of the mechanism to, to let that happen. And I should say as well, this is kind of a, it's a little bit of a cheat answer, Cody, because we're saying one thing, but for that to happen, a whole heap of other things yeah. need to change. So as part of that, you can't have promotion relegation unless there's a second tier, second division, and, and in my opinion, a third, but you know, we can go into that later. Um, you know, you can't do it with a salary cap the way it is. So that'll have to change. You have to look at, you know, the being able to sell players between clubs. All of those things. Um, there's a whole heap of, I guess, other changes that have to happen to make that work. So it's not like we're saying, or Cody, I don't think you are either, saying that you just go and plonk this in and say, yep, one up, one down, anything like that. There's a lot of things that have to change. So mm -hmm. by picking that as our answer, we're kind of covering the board a little bit. Yep. Ah, cool. Um, cool. Thank you very much, for everyone, for the questions. Uh, we'll leave it there. Um, we did have one other question, but it was from my wife, so I won't um, <laughs> put that one in. I think she was just being kind. So thank you for the questions. We might do this. I don't know. We've probably only got a show or two left in us this year, but uh, next year certainly we'll look at doing more Q&A. Jake, part three. Now, this week uh, we're, we're previewing five games. Now, normally we have all the stats. We're doing a little bit different this week. Now, I'm not sure if it's because Jake just ran out of time to do the images and the stats properly. Um, but what his excuse was or reasoning was, uh, we don't want to give you the idea of, we're not telling you how we're voting this week. So we want you to be responsible um, for your own mind. <laughs> we don't want to influence you guys. There you go. What he said. We don't want to influence you. So we're just going to talk about them briefly and let you vote over on Instagram stories when that comes out on probably Wednesday night, I think. Uh, and we'll go from there. So, Jake, um, I'll just jump in. I didn't wear my bloody Altona Magic jersey tonight. I wore it on the live. On, no, I didn't. We didn't do a live. I think I was just wearing it last night in anticipation <laughs> for the live, and we decided not to do it. But anyway, Denonong City, Altona Magic. Now, we looked this up quickly. It was actually quite hard to find details, but we believe it's this Saturday, the grand final. Now, this is um, the MPL 2 in Victoria, Denonong City, Altona Magic, two great clubs. Um, I don't even have their rankings here because Jake hasn't done his job properly. Um, no, it doesn't matter, does it? Um, but yeah, it, it's exciting. We're gonna see these two clubs in the MPL Victoria one next year. So we're gonna uh, see a lot more of them and I'm excited, I'm very excited. Uh, we haven't got a Dandenong City jersey though, so maybe they can be kind and send us one. Uh, yeah, Dandenong City ranked 98th in the country, Cody, and uh, Altona Magic. <laughs> Way higher. Uh, Are they only at 98th? 98th and Altona Magic 93rd. So. I don't know, really. Oh, no, 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 no. They're down in 40 or something or 50 or something. Yep, yep, no, you are right. Sorry about that. What everybody. are you looking that's, at? I'm looking at it right now. I was looking at the 2017 rankings because we were talking about that before. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You got them. Yeah. Yep, Altona Magic 47th uh, and Dandenong City 73rd. Well, that's yeah. actually interesting to see how far they've come. So there you go. Um, yep. That's cool. There you go, guys. Uh, who you think will win? We'll be putting that up on Instagram stories. Uh, Jake, personally, I don't really know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping for Altona Magic just because they, they're so kind and they sent us two awesome jerseys. It's, <laughs> pretty, it's, that, it's yeah. pretty easy to win our hearts. you just got to send us jerseys. <laughs> Jake, you take the next one. This is a good game. Yeah. This one. Yep. Or should, you know, should add a comment or two or like something on social media. We, we tend to Favor those be clubs. quite biased. Yep, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, the next one is uh, the MPL Championship uh, semi-final game. So Campbelltown City playing Sydney Olympic, I think it's on the Saturday this week. Um, and as we said, it's Campbelltown City, now the highest ranked South Australian club. Um, and obviously Sydney Olympic Premier's champions in, in New South Wales, so this will be a good one. Um, and we'll see what everybody seem, at home seems to think, Cody. But yep. I, I think, I wouldn't be surprised actually in this one. I think, I think the voters will go Canberra, uh, Sydney Olympic is my guess, but mm. I wouldn't be surprised at home if Campbelltown um, cause an upset there. Jake, what, if you have those 2017 stats up, do you, uh, how long will it take you to find Campbelltown? I'd love to know where they were. About um, that long. Uh, they were 38th okay. in 2017. They've, they've come a long way then. It isn't easy to jump from 38th to 17th. Like the, no. the higher you get, the harder it sort of is to move up those spots. So well done, Campbelltown. They've had a, such a great year. And we're really looking at the, if you look at the best clubs in the country, you, you really put those three from Victoria, Heidelberg, Bentley, Avondale. You look at Arpia and Sydney Olympic. And they're sort of like the, the, the top five. And then you start to look at the, um, the, the teams from outside those two states. And you look at Lions, you look at Campbelltown, you look at Adelaide City. And yeah, it's, it's exciting to see these teams go head to head. And it might, you know, it might be another year or so till we see the quality of these sorts of games, I, I suppose, Jake. That's why we love these sorts of games. Yep, uh, we're, a bit, we're a bit spoiled. But um, all right, next one is the MPL Victoria 
grand final, Heidelberg, Avondale, huge game. Obviously, don't need to say much about this other than um, it's two of the three of the best teams um, in Victoria and two of the four not best team non-A-League clubs in the country going head-to-head. Uh, Avondale coming from seemingly nowhere. They sort of, Jake, where were they last year? <laughs> 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 if it's not hard, if it's just a control F, Jake. Well, let me tell you, Cody, yeah. Avondale in 2017, or finished 2017 in 44th. There you go, that's huge. So 44th up to 12th. And if they win this game, um, I haven't actually checked to see how it'll work out, but I'm just looking at the, the current rankings yep. and the gap between Heidelberg and Avondale um, as it stands right now is probably enough that I wouldn't... I think Avondale will probably overtake Heidelberg. Yeah. It'll be very close. Um, but I will say also that Heidelberg obviously have that trip up to, to Brisbane. Oh, yeah, Tuesday. Um, yep. To play Lions, and by the time this comes out, that'll have already been played. So that'll obviously change Heidelberg's points up or down, um, depending on that result. Jake, Avondale are a busy club. They've got a uh, FA Cup game. Now, when is that? Is that this weekend? Or is it... It's this week. It's, uh, it's Wednesday. So by the time Wednesday, this is Wednesday, coming sorry. out... Yeah. Yep. Um, so the, yeah, that game will be played as this is coming as out. Coming um, out. Yep. So we might actually preempt it and put that one up on Instagram for the voting a day early. So yep. if you're watching this now on Wednesday... You might just sneak in if you get your voting over on Instagram now or you, or it might actually be gone. But, uh, yeah, so we've got Avondale in two games of the week. Um, and we should, and actually, you know what's interesting here, Cody, is I was going to say for, the, for the, the last game you just mentioned, the grand final, that Heidelberg might have it tough because they've got a midweek game in Brisbane, but Avondale have got a midweek <laughs> game against Sydney FC. So, at least they're at yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, at least are at home. They're not. They're not having to travel. But... Jeez, what a what a huge week for these two clubs, uh, Heidelberg and Avondale. Just um, absolutely massive. So, Jake, can you see Avondale upsetting Sydney FC? Um, yeah, I, I can. I don't think it'll be an easy one, and I honestly, I probably don't expect it, but I could see it. They've. I could see it too. You know, they've been a great club, Sydney FC. Although they're now a few more weeks into their preseason, yeah. they're still in preseason. Um, and they've got those other. The, um, I think their Dutch players have landed. Um, yeah, so yeah. It's going to be tough for them. I think Sydney will... If I reckon if Avondale took a moment in round one or the round of 32, I reckon they could have done them. I just think that extra month or so or however long it's been, I think Sydney will just be a little bit sharper. Yep. I think so too. Jake, the last game we mentioned this earlier, it's the playoff for a spot in the Victorian NPL next year. Green Gully versus Moreland City. Um... Guys at home, the guys who are on Instagram stories, who do you think will win? Green Gully, Moreland City. Uh, I don't, I don't really know. I haven't seen any of these clubs play. Um, I, I suppose Green Gully would go in as favourites. I'm guessing, Jake. On, but um, we'll have to wait for the stats on that one. They will, but uh, let's not let that influence the voting. <laughs> Green Gully um, currently ranked in at fiftieth after that, and uh, Moreland City, I think we mentioned before, in seventy first. Okay. So, small gap, but it's not not a huge gap. Um, and anything yeah. can happen in these games. I mean, Green Gully are used to losing this year. That you know, when you get in a roll and losing, it it can be easy to fade away. More and City, obviously, the opposite. They've had a really good year, um, so it will be interesting to see how. Yeah, this one shapes up in this sort yep. of game. Anything, all or happen. nothing. So yeah, all or nothing. Good luck to both teams, Jake. That's it for the show. That was a big show. We're nearly at bloody thirty big minutes. Show. Yep. Coaching up to 30 minutes. So thanks again to everyone who asked questions. Appreciate that. That was a bit of fun. Lots of games. Still with lots of huge games. Jake, when, when are we wrapping up this season? Oh, let's not make any promises, but I think we've got another week in us. and then we'll, Definitely one we'll week. Prob- we're probably just about out of, out of um, games. games to talk about at that point. Well, so. I, we probably have like just FFA Cup and it's probably not. Yeah, we'll see. We've definitely got one more show. We'll see you back here the week after, but... Um, that might be our last show, so we'll see though. Could be. We'll make a deci- decision between now and then. Um, Jake, how many Seven the- Eleven coffees you have today? Cody, you're gonna you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I didn't. I had a McDonald's coffee today because you I can't afford that. I didn't want to get out of the car, so <laughs> I went straight through the drive-through. And- Can you afford that? Does your budget <laughs> budget allow? Well, let's just say that it's more than twice the cost of a of a Seven Eleven coffee, so I won't be having a Seven Eleven coffee tomorrow, will no, I? You, you go without. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Jake, thanks for joining me, and we'll see Thank every you. everybody uh, next week or end on the social medias. So see you then. Enjoy and um, catch you later.